and welcome to PlayStation Grenade. Before we crack on with this one, I wanted to thank those who have chosen to support me in the Support a Creator event. It's massively appreciated and helps me make more Fortnite content, like this one. You guys, you're awesome. So, we've had Season 6 with us for a while now, and now that everything has started to settle down a little, it's possible to find those underappreciated landing spots, which will net you legendary loot, and in most cases, a rift nearby to get you anywhere you want to be. So here are 6 perfect landing spots for easy wins, and more importantly, places to drop where you can choose your engagement throughout the entire duration of the game. As usual, I've saved my favourite for last, although number 1 on the list is a beauty too. Season 6 brought us a castle! I was hoping for it for so long. I was certain this place would be heavy with action from every single drop, but after the first week, I never saw another player drop here again. It sounds strange, I know, but this place became a ghost town. The only time I saw action here was when the bus was directly overhead. So why is it so special? Well, let me break it down. Firstly, it's a high starting point, meaning you can pop your chute lower to the ground and land earlier. No need to wait seemingly ages to get your boots on the ground. On the negative side, there's only 7 chests up in here, so this is not worth dropping at as a squad, but in solos, it's got potential. The castle offers great sight lines to Junk Junction and Haunted Hills, allowing you to peek at your enemies who are also after a slow start, and due to the high ground advantage, they don't stand a chance. Alternatively, if the circle is favourable, you could drop down and take those 11 chests in Haunted Hills, or another 12 at Junk Junction. But without a doubt, the greatest thing about this landing spot are those rifts nearby. You can follow the circle slowly if that's your bag, and third party any player scrapping. Be warned though, you'll not get much action dropping at the castle. It even allowed me to complete a battle pass challenge with only 18 people left. That's how relaxing a drop this one is. <laughs> Of course, you'll still need some skill to beat the players in the final circle, or just bait the try-hard ones into a trap and... dance? And if you're super lucky, the last player will turn and run in fear. So it's the little things that make this a good landing spot, especially those rifts. It turns an average location into a beast of a starting spot. My favourite place to go from the castle rift is actually the next place on the list. Let's drop at the motel. If the leaks are right, this place won't be here forever, so love it while you can. The motel is such a small location that if the bus path is far enough away, it will go unnoticed. With 7 chests to locate, the motel is pretty good. Also, I've noticed a scar here regularly, around 1 in every 6 games during my tests. Yeah, you know why this is a great landing spot, those lovely rifts. There's only 12 on the map during Season 6, so I like to use them for mobility, and I think that you should consider it too. The trees around the motel will be useful for mats, but it's the quarry shaped like an umbrella which once again doesn't get any attention these days. Farm the stone to your heart's content, and there's even two more hidden chests for good measure. Going back to the motel and rifting away is the ideal method to progress in the mid-game. If for some reason there are no rifts here, just go south, over to the Derberger, there'll be some there instead. Here's another loot run you could consider, depending on the angle of the bus. It's the weakest on the list, but it does include the fabled rift spawn nearby. The truck stop, situated below retail row and just next to the track. Our ultimate aim here is to collect the four chests and take stock of our surroundings. Just north are those rifts. From here you'll be able to decide the best course of action, or a rotation as those pros call it. Retail or the track. The track can be hugely profitable with 10 possible chest spawns and above average random loot drops. I would have suggested landing here straight away, but it's difficult to know if there will be anyone landing here with you. Just before making this video I tried one last time to land there and there was 10 people. So for that reason I used the truck stop to get kitted up and then make a choice from there. There's a rune nearby too, but I'm not sure if they're going to stay for the whole season so let's not include that just now. 
This spot is different from the rest and it's more tactical. It isn't about staying unharmed until the final fight. But if you do want to stay out of harm's way, walk southwest to Brutal Bridge, another spot from Season 5's video. Oh, segue. Speaking of last season... Back in Season 5 we showed you El Pueblo, El Pueblito. The community went on to call this place Westworld. I don't mind what you call it, as long as it's not Wiki Wiki Wild Wiki Wild Wiki Wild Wild West. Shut up, Will. <laughs> this is still a beast of a drop, but just like last time we spoke about this, you will not go here alone, so be ready for a battle. With 18 loot chests, this will have you ultra prepared for the sweaty confrontation in the last circle. Last season, there was rifts galore to escape Westworld, but they're not here this season. But don't you dare worry. If you know about the secret rift, it's still here too. Down in the bottom right hand corner of the map, follow the waterfall, but carefully. I said carefully. Make your way down and you'll see a rift or two. I used to jump straight into them, but on more than one occasion, I went straight through the damn thing. What do you mean? I, I, I didn't miss it. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, can we move on before anyone realizes that I'm the worst player in the lobby? mention to three reactive landing spots that you should consider. Ever heard of the story of the three little pigs? Well their houses are here in Fortnite in season 6, above Lazy Links, to the right of Paradise Palms and under Greasy Grove, all made out of different materials. These don't constitute great landing spots within themselves, but I wanted to make you aware as they are completely ignored. So if you've been to the toilet and you get back late, use one of these, it's a pretty safe location, all three of them. Each can hold up to three chests, there's no rifts nearby, resources aren't too cracking, it's basically a safety net to stop you becoming cannon fodder. The best way to use these is actually mid to late game, depending on the circle. I'm pretty certain loot improves as the game goes on, so by that I mean if there's 20 people left, I'm pretty sure that the chests give you better loot. But of course I can't prove that, it's just a theory at the moment. Do me a favour and let me know if you find better, worse or the exact same loot in the late game. Cheers darling. <laughs> And finally, the greatest landing spot in Season 6. It's a beast, wailing woods and the new cabins and bunkers nearby. It really comes down to that rift hidden away under the old maze, which is now a shady secret government facility. This rift is here 100% of the time. You are guaranteed to get away. But it's all the other things that make this the greatest landing spot in Season 6. There's six chests to grab in and around the bunker, which you can loot without fear of being shot in the back. The acoustics down low will allow you to hear any rushes. Setting up traps wherever you jumped down is a great idea. Because people is dumb. Inside the bunker is enough metal to start your own foundry, and outside you can't see the wood for the trees. In a matter of minutes you'll be loaded with mats, and just off to the west are columns of stone if you want that too. Depending on the circle, it's possible to go to another spot we highlighted last season, the good old architect's house and that double chest spawn at the ice cream truck. North of that, potentially even more rifts too. Wailing Woods is so damn good, should you arrive late and miss your chance to get the bunker, there are cabins nearby with loot in the basements, so even a bad landing here should result in good loot and resources. I'd also like to say that the three chests that can spawn by the rune spot are also ideal, but I don't know what the house from up is going to do soon, so I'll keep that theory for another day. In fact, I'll probably come back once all the runes have been activated, because the map will likely change for Halloween. <laughs> So what do you think? Any of these spots you like? Any of these spots I've completely ruined and now you hate me? <laughs> Let me know if you found any great areas to drop. And also, if you've seen any Easter eggs in Season 6, please give me a shout. Right, did you know that everyone stops watching my videos at 7 minutes? So if you're still hearing this, you're a freaking legend! Thanks for sticking around! <laughs> and now, I'm going to shamelessly plug my supporter creator link. My gamer tag is Adam Arrow. If you ever think you'll be spending V-Bucks, consider adding my name before you do. If everyone does it, it will net me a few dollars and will help me keep creating content on YouTube. You can do this in Save the World or in Battle Royale. Please use this function, regardless of if you help me or not, choose someone, smaller YouTubers and Twitch streamers in particular, they need your support to survive against the ninjas of the world. Right, I'll shut up, thanks for staying till the end, I'll see you next time. Wiki wiki wah, wiki wah, wiki wild wild west.
Jim West, Desperado, Rough Rider. No, you don't want nada. None of this. Six running. Th- Why do I know the lyrics to Wiki Wiki Wild Wiki Wild Wild West? <laughs> Get a life.